a woman with a rough childhood. I was told that I was worthless, that I was no good. Searches for acceptance. My heart had been shattered into a million pieces. See how she found it. Everything exploded. It was just like, all of a sudden I'm in this white, pure white light. Plus, a family of four is plunged into a watery grave. Watch their supernatural rescue, all on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Growing up in poverty with an abusive father, Victoria didn't understand what a father's love was supposed to be like. After years of failed relationships and drug and alcohol abuse, she discovered a love greater than any she'd ever known. I was brought up to feel like we were not important. The family wasn't important, the wife wasn't important, the children were not important. Victoria's childhood memories are of an alcoholic father who neglected and abused his eight children and their mother. My dad would take his paycheck and he would use it for alcohol, for his horses, for his races. This made me feel about myself very sad, very hurt, very lonely. Those years shaped Victoria's view of family and herself. I was told for so many years by my dad that I was worthless, that I was no good. I thought I was stupid. I did not like myself very much at all. Victoria's parents divorced when she was 16 and her mom and siblings moved to Oceanside, California. There, she found a new family, a group of teenagers into drinking and drugs. Drugs made me like myself. You know, hanging out made me like myself. I was trying to escape everything I had known up until this point, who I was, what I was. I was trying to escape all those sad, bad memories. Later, in her early 20s, Victoria moved in with a man who made her feel special. She stopped partying and had two daughters. It wasn't perfect, but it was something. The love that I was looking for, I figured I found it. And, you know, and created this family and created this home. That is, until she caught him with another woman. First I was betrayed by my dad. Now I felt betrayed by this man in my life. My heart had been shattered into a million pieces. I'm not good enough. Victoria felt she had one place to go. Back to what I knew, and that was, let's get rid of some pain, let's get rid of the heartache, let's get rid of everything that's gone wrong. For the next two years, Victoria partied and tried to leave her past behind, but she still felt unfulfilled. Growing up, she had often heard her mom pray. Standing in my bedroom window and it was raining and I just remember that. I started crying. And I started asking God to help me. She changed her lifestyle and for the first time in her life she was happy. She grew closer to God, but even that relationship felt incomplete. It was the feeling of something's missing. It's not there. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But it's a need that I'm striving for. Victoria started going to church and learning that what she had been missing was a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then one night, she stumbled upon the 700 Club. Gordon Robertson was talking about Jesus and asked viewers to pray. Victoria joined in and asked Christ to come into her life. I got this very tingling feeling in my feet. And then it came higher and higher, and it got right here to my chest. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is, what is this? What's going on? And it went up and went up. And as soon as it got to the top of my head, it just, everything exploded. It was just like, all of a sudden I'm in this white, 
pure white light. And it's just everywhere. There was still one thing left to do. I heard this voice say to me, can you forgive? And I very slowly turned my head to the right and I looked and not more than two, three feet from me, Jesus was standing there. And I was looking at him and he said for the second time, can you forgive? And then I said again, I can forgive. And right then, it's like <sighs> rockets going through me. It was like all these colors of the rainbow were just embracing me and going through me and shooting through me and all these feelings of joy and beauty and grace and love. Victoria was finally free of her past and the hatred she had carried so many years. I found everything I was looking for in that moment. He was everything I was looking for. He was everything that was missing. God restored Victoria's relationship with her father and the father of her two daughters. Oh, Jesus is everything to me. He is the love of my life. He is my rock. Give him a mustard seed of a chance and He will show you things. He will take you places. He will transform your life like you have never, ever known, like you wouldn't believe. He will transform you. He will do things for you. It's a wonderful adventure. It's absolutely incredible. How do you get that? When you hear Victoria, you hear the life that she lived, and. And here she is, full of joy and peace. And she says, Jesus was everything I was missing. Now that's an experience. How do you get that experience? How do you, how do you even describe that experience? Well, she's done a good job. She says, it's like rainbows of light all around me. Yeah, can you imagine having that? The wonderful thing about Jesus is he makes each experience for each believer unique. He's a God of infinite variety. And just like every snowflake is unique, your experience with him can be that, can be unique, something just for you. He's created things just for you. He's that much in love with you that he has shaped all things together for your good. And he wants to manifest that. That's what the Bible says. He wants to manifest. He literally wants to turn the light on in your life. Now, what does it take to get there? Well, first, you have to have an understanding that he's there and that he hears you and that he answers prayer. And so as a fundamental, if you're wondering, is this real? Is this is there really a God? Well, it's a very simple prayer. Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, could you show me? Could you show up for me? And then the other part of it, and this is the question that Jesus has for all of us, had it specifically for Victoria, had it for her twice. Can you forgive? Can you let go of the hurts that other people have inflicted on you. And no, it wasn't right. No, it wasn't just. Uh, you're, you're justified, if I can use that word, you're justified in holding on to anger and bitterness, resentment, what should have been and never was for you. But if you can let that go, if you can forgive, then a wonderful adventure can start with Jesus. And he says it very clearly in the Bible that if we don't forgive, 
Our Heavenly Father can't forgive us. It's the one thing that can block it, that can block His presence, is what we hold on to. So if you're ready for this, if you want this, let's pray together and let Jesus do it. What He's done for others, He will do for you. You're just a, as much a child of His, and you know, we're all in this together. And He wants to come to you. So if you want it, let's pray. So bow your head, close your eyes, and just repeat after me. Pray with me. Jesus. That's right. Say His name. Say it out loud. Jesus. I come to you. And Jesus, I want to know that you're real, that you hear my prayer. So I open the door of my heart and I ask that you come in. I ask that you make me new again. I ask that you forgive me of all the things that I've done wrong. And Jesus, right now, I forgive everyone who has ever harmed me, has ever done anything against me. I forgive them and I let it go. I let them go and I don't hold it against them anymore. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my shepherd, be my guide. Be my Savior, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that your presence would fill them to overflowing, surround them with your love. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to make a phone call. Let somebody know. The Bible says that when we believe in our hearts and then confess with our mouths, we shall be saved. The number's on the screen, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got something really wonderful for you. It's a packet. It's absolutely free. It's called A New Day. And there's a CD teaching. How do you live the Christian life? What do you do next? There's also a booklet filled with Bible verses. I want you to have it. There's no financial obligation at all. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, and say, I want that uh, new day. I want to know how to live the Christian life. It's all for you, so call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, coming up, terror on the water for a family of four. The boat just smashed into the concrete wall and just dragged down the side of it. It was a horrifying feeling, like frozen panic. See how all four family members survived. You don't want to miss their miraculous story. It's right after this. Kelly and Shaw Merritt took their two children out on a lake for what was supposed to be a fun afternoon of boating. Well, then suddenly, without warning, all four of them were fighting for their lives. When the call come from Doherty County 911 that particular day, uh, you know, I just knew that we would actually be doing a, a search and recovery instead of a search and rescue. The weather for the previous three days had been nothing but rain, so we just thought, oh, it's gorgeous outside, and we'll jump in our boat and uh, go down Lake Cheeha and see all of the beautiful nature that's here in our area. Kelly Merritt and her family were enjoying a spring afternoon on the lakeside of the Georgia Power Dam. They didn't realize that the open gates of the dam were creating a dangerous undertow. The water was very calm on top. Our boat was being pulled without us knowing that it was being pulled. The closer they got to the dam, the greater the undertow which now began sweeping the boat toward the concrete wall near the spillway. It was just sucking the boat uh, faster and faster. We had lost control of the boat. The motor did not seem to matter anymore. The boat just smashed into the concrete wall and just dragged down the side of it. I 
prayed to God and it was a horrifying feeling, like frozen panic. All of the sudden, my son decided to jump out of the boat and he was swimming as hard as he could, but I watched him get sucked underneath the boat. And then I put my arms around my daughter who was sitting right in front of me. As the boat was sucked through the wall, the water forced her daughter, Mize, from her arms. There are no words to describe the feeling of her being ripped away from my arms. It was very much like I was already dead. Kelly was sure she would never see her family again. The force of this water was so strong, I felt concrete and slime, and I dropped for what felt like an eternity. I reached up and I could feel the carpet on the bottom of the boat, and then behind me I could feel the concrete. I was pinned there, and it was a horrifying feeling. Kelly began to accept the fact that she may die. I was having a conversation with God at that point, and I was telling him, um, in essence, thank you for all that I had had. I, I knew in my heart that I wanted more, but I didn't want more if, if my children weren't gonna be with me, if my husband wasn't gonna be with me. I said, Jesus, I need you to walk on water right now. I felt it literally like, like, I don't need an ambulance, I don't need a helicopter, I don't need a life flight, I need a miracle worker, I need Jesus. Just as Kelly could hold her breath no longer, the boat rolled over, freeing her. I then was pulled towards the surface. Kelly began swimming against the swift current, trying to get to shore. Then I saw my son's head and um, just a second or more after I saw the back of my husband's head, it was life, it was hope. Whenever I went over, I didn't know where the rest of my family was, and then I had like my dad grab a hold of the back of me, and at that point I felt like, almost like it gave me a hope to keep trying to swim and keep trying to get up. But there was still no sign of Mize. I was just screaming, where is my daughter? Basically, my husband and my son started running down the bank of the river. They were hollering back, she's not here. I just laid in the sand on the side of the river, and I was just screaming, I need my child. I thought at that moment that we'd lost her, and then I heard someone yell, you know, we found her, we have her. Once torn from her mother, Ms. A had dropped down the wall also and found herself alone in the river on the other side. Suddenly, a, a man walked up to where I was laying on the ground, and he said, ma'am, I think we have your daughter. And he had on a green t-shirt, it said John 316. I started um, following him. All of a sudden, she was just there in the path. I couldn't see even a scratch on her. Indescribable, it is, it's indescribable. At that moment, that's when I realized that, that we had experienced a miracle and, and we made it, we survived. I felt like another person was holding on to me, but there was no one around me when I came up. And I, I knew that it had to be God because there was no one else around. You know, it was nothing short of, of God's mercy and, and four miracles performed that day for this entire family. The Merritt family drove home with no serious injuries. And while they never saw the man in the John 3.16 t-shirt again, they are grateful for his part in God's protection that day. I almost felt like he was an angel, but he had the biggest, prettiest smile. And that smile just, you know, came with a sense of peace. You wouldn't have thought that he would have, uh, you know, been the one to give you reassurance that everything's okay, but he did. About a year later, we were sitting in church um, and uh, our pastor led us to read Isaiah 43, 2. And it said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you and the rivers will not overflow you. And in that moment, I knew that God had given our family a Bible verse that was just for us, it was ours. Jesus had truly been with us. He was truly walking on water for us in those moments. He was, he was with us. Right now, I believe that we are for living miracles. 
He is our very present help in times of trouble. But I love what she prayed. Here she is. She's pinned by a boat on top of her and a concrete wall behind her, and she knows that she's facing death. But what does she do? She starts to thank God for everything that he's done for her. What a wonderful lesson for all of us. Uh, I doubt I would be thanking God at that moment, but she did. And in that, she realized something incredible. We enter into his courts with thanksgiving. And the protection that flowed from that, he is our very present help in time of trouble. If you need prayer, we're here for you, and we're here to believe God with you. And so all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, still ahead, see how twin blind girls get their sight back. That's next, so don't go away. Well, seven-year-old Abelia and Alba are identical twins who live in Guatemala. The girls suffer from juvenile cataracts that make them both 90% blind. Abelia and Alba are identical twins. Because they're nearly blind, they must feel their way along this fence in order to walk to school. We see what is near. We don't see anything farther. We have many headaches. Their juvenile cataracts started developing soon after they were born. To navigate around their house, their dad taught them to count the steps between rooms. We count 10 steps from the kitchen to the bedroom. And attending school is becoming more and more of a challenge. We often feel sad. Some days we feel like quitting school and stay home. When the girls' parents couldn't afford surgery, they turned to an old folk tradition for help. We thought we could take the curse away from the girls, rubbing a fish on their eyes. So Operation Blessing arranged to take the girls to a hospital in the city. There, a simple surgery changed everything. Before, I could not see hardly anything. Now, I can see everything. I can see the coconuts on the top of our tree. I can see my house and all the animals passing by. The girls have now returned to school filled with hope. Thanks to Operation Blessing for operating my eyes. Thanks to God and a big applause to them. And thanks to you, if you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of doing that. You're part of helping those wonderful girls get their sight back. Just imagine living in Guatemala, living in, in those conditions, and here you're losing your eyesight. Where do you go? What do you do? Uh, how do you get the support that you need? Um, you know, for, for you, it seems impossible. But isn't it wonderful when we can all band together and say, yes, we can make a difference. We can do something for people in the world. Uh, we can be that helping hand. We can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We can go to them and in their need provide. Uh, that's a wonderful thing, a wonderful thought. So if you're a member, thank you. Thank you for what you are doing every single day around the world. If you're not a member, I invite, invite you to join us now. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, and say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is it? It's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Now, some of you, you can join at a higher level, and we have those for you. We have 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year, and that breaks out to $84 a month. And we have a lot of different ways you can join us. You can call us, 1-800-700-7000. You can go to our website, 700clubinteractive.com, and there's a place on, your, um, uh, on the web page where you can designate your gift if you'd like to. Uh, you can also join then. And when you call and join, I've got something for you. It's a wonderful DVD teaching on miracles. Uh, here are some real-life testimonies of people 
who have encountered the supernatural, who have had miracles happen in their lives. It's yours when you join us, so call us 1-800-700-7000. Here's a verse for you from Romans chapter 12. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it get gladly.